friends, welcome back to In the Adventure Continues. It's been a hot minute since I did a vlog again. I apologize, but this vlog is going to be very eclectic. I am in the car because I'm going to get a haircut, which I need desperately, but I wanted to do this intro because I just needed to get it done. If you know, you know. This vlog is going to be a little bit of fall festivities that we've been going on really cool adventures. And then a little bit of like adoption stuff, um, actual process. We did the pear process and I wanted to give you the breakdown on that as well. But first, I need a haircut. See you soon. All right, haircut complete. Just a little trim, but man, it's so pretty. Oh. I love haircuts, they're the best ever. Let's go home now and I will officially give you the rundown of what's been going on. But first, let me send you to one of our fall festivities that we've done. Um, we went apple picking and it was so much fun and I took a bunch of video and then I never put it together. So I'm gonna stick it in this vlog. This was our apple picking adventure, here we go. picking kind of a sky top in North Carolina it's raining you can see my shirt we are soaked Go. so we have our bag we paid for our bag there's $25 for the bag mission apple picking, picking to fill commence. the bag oh mission apple picking to fill the bag commence <laughs> We finally found some apples. Look at how much we've done so far. I don't know if the green ones are actually supposed to be green because I know there are some green apples, but we okay. may have accidentally got... They're not ripe, I don't uh, think. Okay. That's all right, we finally found some and it's still raining and foggy. I don't think that the video does it justice, like just how foggy it really is. You, see, you can see the fog. Lots and lots of fog, but it's like even foggier than that in reality. It's fun, but hey, it's not hot, so we're gonna go with it. <laughs> Let's go pick some more apples. Let's do it. Do you wanna see if you can get those ones? I'm not, I'm not tall enough. Is this a slow motion apple pick? <laughs> I'm gonna have to do this at like four times speed. <laughs> you look crazy. interesting all right we got our bag of apples it's like as full as we can possibly get it i think there's with a lot of sky top we were walking back to the exit and i was like it smells like grape flavoring that's so weird it's because there's grapes big beautiful grapes right oh my word and right behind us and also the noise you keep hearing in the background is the apple cannon <laughs> Apple picking complete. We officially filled our apple bag. We actually got some really beautiful ones this time. I don't know what variety the red ones were, but they're really pretty. We also got an apple cider slush. It's so yummy. It's just some, it's, it's like a apple sugar. It's frozen apple cider, basically. It. It's so delicious. It's really good. And we had our um, apple cider donuts when we first got here. Those are worth driving two hours for y'all. Mm -hmm. They are so soft and literally like super fresh. As soon as they finish them, they box them and hand you the box and they're so light and airy. They're heaven. How's the slushy? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. That's yummy. We're gonna have a two hour drive home soaking wet, but that's okay. This was certainly an adventure. 
and we're back. As I said, this is a very eclectic vlog. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed our apple picking adventure. That was so much fun. This is the part of the vlog that we're going to get more into the nitty gritty of adoption. Um, if you are just looking for an adoption update, we are still waiting. <laughs> Nothing's changed too much. Although all of our dossier paperwork is in Taiwan being translated and it really should go to court any day. Um, I mean, it'll go to court, but court will have to be scheduled. So we're waiting, but it's there and progress is being made. We just had, I believe it was our fifth or sixth video call with the kids. It was the first one where we had separate calls. So a call with our son. And then a couple days later, we had a call with just our daughter. Um, and it was really, really good. We're very thankful for the calls where they're together because they need to get to know each other since they've never lived together or really interacted very much. So we love the calls all together they tend to get a little bit chaotic and it's hard to um, kind of spend one-on-one -on -one focus time with each kid. So these calls gave us the opportunity to interact individually with them and it was awesome and really, really helpful and we just had so much fun. Oh, if you're wondering why Josh isn't here with me, he is actually, so we both picked up kind of hobbies to help us fill the time between now and when we go to get the kids. Josh is currently going to tutoring for Mandarin. I'm kind of learning it um, with an app, Duolingo, um, a couple of apps, and watching a lot of videos. So I'm studying it as well, but he's going to an actual Mandarin tutor uh, once or twice a week. And then I took up ballet because it was something I had wanted to do my entire life. So those are what we're doing to help us not go completely stir crazy. Those are kind of the updates. We're still hoping to travel by like January or February, really, really hoping and praying. We'll see. The timeline is still very much up in the air as we wait for court and ruling and all of that lovely stuff. For those of you that are also in the Taiwan adoption process, I wanted to spend a few minutes and kind of break down one of the steps that we just did. If you're here just for the adventures and for the highlights of the adoption, you can fast forward a bit because this is going to get a little bit technical for those who are actually in process. But stick around till the end because I have another really fun fall adventure that um, was amazing and you should totally watch it. Anyways, for the rest of you that might be in process for Taiwan or might be thinking about it, let me break down the pair process. Part of why it's taken me so long to do this video is that I wasn't exactly sure what we had done because it all went so quick and we just got it done. And so I had to spend some time and take some notes and be able to articulate exactly what we did because it was just a whirlwind of stuff. Months and months back, we did the I-600A process. You can watch that video here. Now we did the I-600 process. So when we did the I-600A, it's for immigration with the United States Immigration, USCIS, something about United States Immigration and Services, something, something. We did that process before, and that basically created a generic placeholder. It said that we were adopting two children. It gave the general age range they might be in, but it was not specific to our children. Now this I-600 process comes after you get that approval. It comes now and it's you put the information in for your specific kids, their names, date of birth, all the stuff unique to them. Our adoption agency emailed us told us it was time to go on ahead and move forward with this step, gave us a little booklet of instructions because these forms are kind of nitty gritty. They sent us a whole bunch of reports on the kids that we hadn't seen before. It wasn't necessarily new information. I would just say it was kind of like more details of what we already knew, if that makes any sense. Really good information to have. This was the first thing paperwork wise where we filled it out and we sent it to our adoption agency and then they sent it on to USCIS. Um, we didn't. Most of what we've done before has just been directly with the other departments. Um, this time it had to go through our adoption agency to them. You know, our adoption agency emailed us all the forms, sent us a booklet of instructions on what to do, and then we filled everything out like mad people and got it sent back. We didn't have to have anything notarized this time, which was lovely. We didn't have to have fingerprints done again, which was fantastic because I'm really tired of those. But we started off with the actual I-600 application. It is different than the I-600A, just so you know. 
Um, we had to do one per child. I am going to be referring to my notes because there was just so much paperwork and it was really hard to keep up with what was what and the purpose of it. So I'm going to refer to notes to make your life and my life a little easier, hopefully. So we had I-600 applications for each child. So it had a section about us. We had to be very careful that our names and everything we put matched our passports exactly. Very important if you are doing it as well. There was a question on this I-600 application that asked if we had previously done an I-600A and the status of that, whether it had been approved or denied. So we actually had to put down uh, the I-600A that we just got approved for Taiwan. And then we also had to put down the information about the I-800A that we had gotten approved for for China. So we did have to specify both. If you're switching from China to Taiwan, you will have to do that as well. Um, then there was a, another part of this I-600 application that wanted the kids information um, and asked about their special needs, asked about um, their ages, where they live currently. There was a question about uh, whether or not we had fulfilled any state pre-adoption requirements. I was really lost on that one and so I had to email our home study agency since they're different from our adoption agency. They let us know that no, there aren't any additional pre-adoption requirements for our state. Your state might be different. So make sure you check and do pre-adoption requirements and whether those have been fulfilled when you do your I-600 application. There one part of the I-600 application that I got really confused on and had to email our agency for was they have a whole section devoted to expenses for the adoption and at this point in the adoption game like there's there's been a lot of expenses quite frankly and to a lot of different places and so that question kind of overwhelmed me at first um, I've been keeping really careful record of everything but it was still just like oh my gosh I have to like how far how minuscule do I have to break this down um, and our agency said it doesn't have to be like super duper nickel and dimed. Do one row for agency fees and the total, not like each single one that you paid, but like the total agency fees. And then if you submitted them over several dates, which we did just write in like month and year, you don't have to do a day for the date. Agency fees, we had to do the children's services um, agency that our kids are with in Taiwan that was a different fee we had another row for USCIS fees we had another row for IAME fees another row for our home study since that was separate from our adoption agency and then another row for what we anticipate spending on travel that could just be an estimate so that expenses kind of took me a little bit longer than I thought that it would because it, it got confusing to me. Hopefully it won't get confusing to you. Just kind of keep it very simple. Month and year, um, it doesn't have to be down to the last cent and stick to like those major fees. Our agency said the reason that that's asked is USCIS just wants to make sure that nobody's getting taken advantage of and paying um, like really exorbitant amounts for the adoption because that would you know kind of be a red flag of different agencies that might need to be investigated. It's just to make sure that you're not getting bamboozled, basically. <laughs> There's lots of questions on the I-600 application, but those were kind of just the highlights of it and some of the stuff that we had questions on. Hopefully that helps you. I'm sure that your adoption agency will also give you tons of instructions. So stick with what they tell you. This is just to kind of give you a little bit of a preview um, if you're in limbo and you want to know what's coming next. The next form that um, you might have to do, we didn't have to do it, but it's the supplement one form. And that's for if you have any adult over 18 in the household other than the adoptive mom and dad. For us, it's just Joshua and I in our household, nobody else, but like if you had lived with, had grandma living with you or like another child that was 18 or older, then you would need to do a supplement one. Supplement two, we did have to do, that's like a privacy act. We had to do two of them. One, to give USCIS permission to talk with our adoption agency and another to give USCIS permission to talk with our home study agency. Whew, I'm tired. So one for our adoption agency, one for our home study agency. And if you're familiar with like HIPAA in medical or FERPA in education, basically it's that exact thing. It's just giving permission for one party to talk to the other one. That's supplement two. Then we had form <clears throat> I-864W, which is, ready for this mouthful, 
Request for exemption for intending immigrants affidavit of support. What this form is, such a mouthful and so confusing. We had to do two of these, one for each kid, and you fill it out from the child's perspective. So when it asks for name of requester, that's your child. You're not filling it out for you. There is like a part at the end about contact information, and then you go on ahead and you do put your like phone number and email address, and you sign your signature, obviously. But in the requester information, it's your child. And then when it asks for an address, it's like the address of whatever social ser services agency your child is affiliated with within Taiwan. Um, and there's also one question on that where the answer is like, I'm under 18 years old and that's the box that you check for your kiddos because obviously they're not adults yet. So they're under 18. But that I-600, mm, that I-864W form is filled out from your child's perspective. And then that brought us to the last form that we had to do, which was form G1145, an e-notification application. We did the same with the I-600A application. It's a form that gives them permission to text you when they've received your information. So like we just got a text message from them a couple of days ago that is an acknowledgement that they have received our pair documents. So basically, we filled out all of our stuff. We sent it to our adoption agency. Our adoption C compiled it with some of the reports on our children and then sent all of that to USCIS in Texas. It took about one to two weeks after they got it for us to get a text that says, hey, we got it. And we got two different text messages with like case numbers because two different children. When the actual I-600 pair approval comes in, that will come in the mail. No idea how long it's running. We just have to have it before travel. We can't travel yet, so I'm not really watching the mailbox for this one. Not yet anyway. <laughs> but that form G1145 is what gave USCIS the permission to go on ahead and send us a text to as kind of like a receipt acknowledgement that they have our stuff and they're working on it. Okay, so if you're still hanging out with me, <laughs> That was a mouthful. I hope it was helpful in some way. Like I said, it was just a lot of stuff all at once and our agency did kind of give us a tight deadline. So we were trying to get it done as fast as possible. I'm sure you will be as well. Let's recap. We had to send them two I-600 applications, one for each kid. We had to send one, two supplement twos, one for our adoption agency, one for home study agency two I-864W forms, one for each kid, and then one G-1145, which was that like um, e-notification form. That's everything that we sent to our adoption agency. And then they worked their magic and sent it on its way. One thing the instructions from our agency said was to make two copies of basically everything because it was what we sent to them, but then we also had to take a copy with us when we travel. I scanned everything in cam scanner. I've talked about that app before. It's beautiful. If you're in the adoption process, I highly, highly recommend cam scanner. Again, not sponsored, just love them. Trying to find the little button to show you. Mm. Cam scanner. I scanned everything into a PDF and have it stored in there and I'll print it right before we travel. But you will want to go ahead and make sure you keep a copy of like all of these forms just in case. That's where we are. Our I-600 application, our PAIR documents, P-A-I-R as they call them, are officially in Texas and in process and we will get them before we're ready to travel. And that gives all the immigration stuff that we need for them to come to their new home here. Thanks for hanging in there with me. If you are in process for Taiwan or like thinking about it, please feel free to reach out. We are on Instagram. Hey, this is the perfect segue for the plug that I always forget to put in. We're on Instagram. Please come say hi. We're at and the adventure continues underscore adopt. If you just go to and the adventure continues, that is not us. Don't forget the underscore adopt. We'd love to hear from you, hear about your story. Um, just say hey. So please come say hi on Instagram. And with that, I think that gives you all of the current adoption updates. Like I said, we're waiting, we're waiting. We were really hopeful that they would be here by Christmas, but 
it's not looking like that's gonna happen and that's okay there's a reason for the timing we're hoping for january or february maybe we'll be there for lunar new year which would be amazing that would be so cool like what an awesome thing to experience we have no idea though we're just hanging on praying for them and waiting lots and lots of waiting however we are continuing to go on adventures just the two of us because you know guys we've been married almost 15 years it will be 15 years in february since we got married crazy absolutely crazy and so we're just trying to kind of enjoy this last time that we have is just the two of us because we've been married just the two of us for a heck of a long time and life is going to be topsy-turvy once the kids are here in the best way possible but we're just trying to take advantage of this time and have as many adventures as we possibly can which leads me to this last little bit that I want to leave you with. We, have you ever been to one of those drive-through safari zoos? They're so much fun, oh my gosh. So we had a friend just randomly call us up bright and early one Saturday and say she was taking her granddaughter and had more room in the car and wanted to know if we wanted to come with her. So let me drop the footage in here. It was so much fun and absolutely hilarious. Like belly laugh hilarious i'm going to leave that adventure with you now for your viewing pleasure i think it's called let me tell you what it's called eudora wildlife safari park that's where we went and it was absolutely magical please enjoy this footage for your viewing pleasure until next time guys and the adventure continues Zajian, bye I love you. I love you. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love you. Oh okay, goodness. goodbye. Sideways. Oh, you're terrifying. Oh, please don't get my face. Oh, <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Do not eat the whole bucket. Oh my god! Oh my god! No. 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 big and slightly terrifying. Oh, but you're so sweet. Oh, you're so sweet. I love you. Still, I'll give you one. I'll Look give at those cute boys. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You're so cute. So we're at a petting zoo. Where you like drive through. Sorry. Hello, handsome. Oh, hi. Say hi. You are very gentle. You want some more? Oh my word! <laughs> she is amazing! <laughs> oh, it's so sweet! Oh, I want one. <laughs> we just gotta move to a. Uh, if we get a homestead, Hi, can God I have bless one? Oh, you. <laughs> oh, you're coming, you're coming, you're coming. Oh, he's he's so, so beautiful. You want one more? I'm a sucker. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Oh, oh my goodness. He's so cute. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you for being sweet. You need to go a little bit. Oh, please don't snot on me.